What a night, huh? What a night. People who have followed this franchise, I'm going to guess, will never forget it. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins 6, Sabres 5 in overtime doesn't even come close to scratching the surface of what actually occurred at this event that I was blessed to be able to cover. Evgeny Malkin's 500th goal. Sidney Crosby's 1600th point. Not one, but two significant rallies to come back. And then when you get to OT, what else was going to happen? on a four-on-three power play other than Sid scoring, Gino getting an assist. I'm not even sure where to start with this particular episode because I could probably do about eight of them off of that game. But as I was sharing with you guys yesterday, there is something special in hockey about 500 goals. It seems probably a little bit strange in some scenarios where the 500th gets celebrated even recognized as a bigger deal, it seems, than the 600th of those rare types that make it to the higher levels. A lot like Sid's 1,000th was a really big deal, meaning his point, whereas his 1,600th, you know, it ends up being just another 100 on his way to wherever it is that he'll end up. But in this franchise's history, there are three players who've hit 500, Mario Lemieux, Sid, and Gino. And with something that's really important to Gino on a lot of levels, actually, he's now only the second Russian to score 500 in the NHL behind, of course, Alexander Ovechkin. Gino was asked about both of those and had this to say. First of all, it's uh, great names, you know. Second, it's like, not bad myself, you know. It's like, uh, I'm trying again, do my best. And it's again, like... When you play against Ovechkin, like you try to be better, and uh, same like uh, we play with the same team, but uh, I'm trying to do my best, and he's probably look to me. I push to him, he push to me. You know, it's, uh, we try to help each other. And uh, tonight it's not perfect game, but we talk in locker room and try to push everybody, and uh, it's work. You know, for people who play so much better, and uh, again. It's uh, finally I'm score, you know, now I'm relaxed, more calm, and like uh, not think too much, sleep better, and uh, just play hockey. It's kind of funny. Maybe I've shared this story with you guys before, but when Gino was drafted, before he was drafted, I should say, there was a media availability at which both Gino and Ovi were in the same room. And Ovi's at one corner, Gino's at the other. Everyone had a pretty good idea that Pittsburgh was going to take Gino, so I spent most of my time with him. But they were so different. They were personality-wise, you know, Ovi's over there entertaining and making everybody laugh and trying so hard to speak English, and Gino's not even pretending to be able to. He was just mumbling away in Russian and using the interpreter. But the one thing that Gino stressed more than anything else that day, and I'll never forget this, was that he really didn't like the way Ovi was portrayed as the goal scorer and he was portrayed as the playmaker. He said, I'm not, that's, I, I'm proud of my passing. I, you know, I think I'm good at it, but I can score goals too. I love to score goals. He has always loved to score goals. So there was always going to be something special to him about this specific milestone. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your summer sports needs this season from Major League Baseball, golf, NHL, NBA playoffs. Get the latest odds and lines, including all team matchups, player props, odds on just about everything that's out there. Head to the website today. Or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. And to have it happen uh, like this with Sid, it, it, I mean, it wasn't just that Sid assisted on the goal. It said it was a spectacular assist. A blind pass from below the goal line where you know Sid's down 
and then the goal somehow tops it. Gino has to take one, and then two, and then three cracks to get it past Ukapeka Lukanen, who was really good, I thought, actually, for a game in which he gave up six goals. And not only that, but Gino's down uh, on his rear end and lifts the thing over Lukanen's pad. Big time goal off a big time assist. And are you ready for the punchline here? On Sid's 500th goal, there was only one assist, and it was from Gino. On this goal, there was only one assist, and it was from Sid. And bear in mind, these are, these are centers who've almost never been line mates at even strength. Gino would say later, I don't know how things like this happen. Sure he does. Sure he does. For the true greats, boy, is that a term that gets overused or misused. The greats, the giants of their respective games, the dramatic is the norm. You don't expect players at this extraordinary elite tier to do stuff like this in situations that won't entertain, that won't feel as if they're some sort of great story. You know, that's what Gino called this. He called it a great story, and he's right. And for as many times as it's been written, the greatest part of this story is that it's not done. It's not done. Check your NHL scoring leaders this morning. Let me know who's sitting up there at the top. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Michael, but the same question or varieties of this question were asked by a lot of different people. Mike's on Long Island, and he asks DK, how long of a leash does Tristan Jari have this season? He's been pulled three times. His body language in net seems disinterested. Is it, if he doesn't care, I don't ever believe that pro athletes don't care, but he doesn't seem to at least like have a competitive gene in him. What is your view of Jari's future if he keeps playing this way? You know, it's funny, Mike. Normally, I'd be like, come on, Mike, this was a big, happy occasion, and they roared back, and they won, and Gino this, and Sid that, and I, I'm i here to tell you, I have walked out of that arena last night just thinking about this. In fact, I felt so strongly on that count that what was going to be one written column that I put together after this game ended up turning into three because I knew I had to take care of Gino. I knew I had to take care of Sid, but I also knew that I felt I had something to say about this goaltender and other issues that the Penguins have that are preventing them from maybe making all the rest of this good stuff count. I would make a terrible, terrible NHL head coach. I would never play Jari again. So I'm not saying that as if I'm correct. I'm saying that as if I'd be a terrible NHL head coach. I've seen enough. I've had enough. Bad body language on the ice. Bad vibes off the ice. Now a new habit of disappearing from the room after games. But more than anything, just bad goaltending. You can say what you want about the Penguins giving up all the odd man breaks and playing way, way, way too loose, even against this opponent that always seems to bring out that looseness in them. But I'm going to say to you right now the same thing I said after the Rangers game, which is that bad goaltending, goaltending that you as a player don't trust will suck the life out of you. This is true of this beautiful game at every level at which it's played. If you're in the Harmerville Blade Runners Beer League, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly how you and your teammates play in front of good goaltending and how they play in front of bad goaltending. It's not supposed to affect you, but it does. And in this case, he, Jari, brought them down yet again. Whereas the kid comes in, Yoel Blomquist, stops the first 21 pucks that he sees and gives the team a chance to come back in it, as Lars Eller 
eloquently stated it afterward. The Sabres did put a couple by him in the third period. One on a laser of a wrist shot, the other one on a puck that deflected twice to go into the net to give Buffalo their lead. But he was really, really, really good. And when Alex Nedeljkovic comes back, and I understand that that's going to be sooner rather than later, that kid can't go anywhere. And I don't even have some sort of roster solution for this, okay? My attention was split a lot of different ways last night. So I, I'm i not going to have all of the, here's what they could do with him, and they could do this, and they could do that. And I don't care. So I would also make the NHL's worst general manager, because I actually wouldn't care what became of this asset. I don't care about playing him to build him up for trade value. I don't care enough to keep him around as a third goaltender the way you see some teams do. Detroit's doing it right now just because they're concerned about roster this or roster that or getting value for whatever. I don't care. I don't care. There were two living legends on that rink last night performing at a still extraordinary level. Their interest, and I don't know how much more obvious Gino himself could have made this last night, is in winning. Gino scores his 500th goal. The, the camera pans down and shows him, uh, meaning uh, the camera, uh, the, the arena scoreboard camera people. So he's up there and, and he knows it because he looks up and sees himself and he has no reaction. Crowd's going berserk and everything else because you can tell he's trying to reset himself for the remainder of this game. They want to win. It's their greatest claim to fame. It's what they have most enjoyed in their NHL careers is the winning. Sid, Gino, Chris Letang, they're here to do that. They deserve infinitely better than what they're getting from Jari. So I don't know if you thought I wasn't going to answer this or whatever, but trust me, I've answered it emphatically now, both here and in print. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. And we will have another one of these tomorrow. 